My name is Miloš Divojevic. I'm head of MS SQL Database Engineering at Intain. Uh, Intain is online uh, world, in the world, uh, the best, uh, the best uh, uh, betting and gaming company. And I'm used to speak on conferences. I'm co-author of three books. You can see on them on the screen. My uh, contact, my email address and LinkedIn handle. You can add me on LinkedIn if you have questions related to this particular session or query tuning at all. Uh, link for session feedback you can find here, or you can just go to the conference site. Each session has some link for feedback and please give feedback. Feedback will help uh, organizers and will help, um, will help uh, speakers to make uh, this next time better. How it works? I intentionally didn't want to pre-record this session. This session is about query tuning and I want to tune together with you. Since this session will be, is online, but you have delay of 15, 20 seconds. So uh, still it's possible for you to give suggestions about the query, how to tune something, why something is slow and so on. So first I will show you a query. I will execute it, show execution plan. I will check, uh, show you indexes available for this query. And then you'll suggest some changes. I'll apply suggestions. Then we'll discuss why it works or why it doesn't work. And I'll provide solution or solutions in case of we have uh, more, more, more than one and um, uh, in case this is not already provided. So let's tune. This is everything from my slides here. We will work in uh, Management Studio. We will work with code. And this is my first query. I have a, my sample database and this database has two large tables. Uh, uh, this order details table is not the order details from wide world importers. This order details table has 330 million rows. And here's the query you need to tune. So I have declared local variable and put some number here. And I just want to get uh, details for 100 orders. So I have 330 million rows in this table, but only 100 orders. This, this uh, query will, uh, will return um, uh, 1,000 rows or something like that. One, uh, one thousand, uh, no, sorry, 192 rows will be returned from this query. If I would run this query now, I will run it to show you the execution plan. This query will take about two minutes. And here are so uh, indexes in this table. You can see that the uh, a column that I use is filter order ID is index. I have index IX1 on order ID. And I have a cluster index on, on um, order details ID. That's all. And as you might guess, this will not be, uh, this will be slow. And I will run this and we'll show it then after that execution plan, or I will show execution plan, uh, live execution plan, because this will not work. Okay. Sorry. So, live execution plan. And here is a query. So as you can see, SQL Server goes to scan the entire table. I, th I told you table has 330 million rows. Why? And how can we make this query faster? This is the question. So I hope that I can see some questions. Okay, any suggestions? Why is this query slow? I have an index in order ID and why SQL Server decided to scan the entire table and make this really slow? It still work. It's already 40, 48 seconds. Why is this thing slow? Big hint, there is one suggestion you use for sick hint. So four sig hint did work in this case, make it faster. Okay. Anything else? Order by on calls. Yeah, this is order by is a business logic. If we remove order by, it would be maybe better, but it is uh, order by 
is a part of it. So this query is very selective. It returns less than 200 rows. So order by is not the problem here. What's the problem? Why is this query slow? This for sick is one of the possible solutions. Why is this query slow? So I have a delay, therefore I need to wait a bit uh, 15 seconds. So this query, I will explain now why is this query slow. This query is slow because we use local variable. Whenever you use local variable in queries, you have to be careful, especially when you have a, a non-equal operator here. I have a greater than and less than. This is in count between. I just want to have details for 100, 100 orders, but I use local variables. If I would write this directly without local variables, so I'll put here, replace this thing, and put here uh, this and this. I have no local variables now. I have just literals, numbers. This will be executed immediately, so without any problems. So we have, ex oh, sorry, I need to remove for sick because somebody, so sorry for that. So this original query, it will work perfectly with numbers, but it doesn't work with, with uh, local variables. So local variable in SQL Server C local variable, it doesn't know exactly how many rows will be returned. And if you have uh, equal parameter, it will assume it will be average. It will take average of execution of orders per um, uh, order details per order. And if you use greater than or less than, this thing will Return, SQL Server will assume that the query will return 30% of the entire rows. If 30% of rows will be returned, SQL Server will, of course, create a, a use a, 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 with scan the table, which is a better better option for that. And uh, that's the reason why is this query slow. Uh, the second was, yeah, is option recompile. So the actually the first tip here is more to try option recompile. Because when you use option recompile, SQL Server this uh, local variables tr uh, transfer to these lines here, to literals, and this will work perfect. So it will be executed immediately. You get excellent plan. You get significantly better plan than the one within the, uh, with four six. Sorry, I need to remove this four six. And SQL Server uh, does the magic here. Why is this query slow when you use local variables? Because when you create the when SQL Server needs to create execution plan for this query, it needs to create this at this point. At this point, this value is unknown. And SQL Server needs to est estimate number of rows, so how many rows will be returned, where you have where order ID greater than something. This something can be here one. If I would have a zero here or one, SQL Server will return uh, uh, results for the entire table. And if, if, for instance, here is one and ID is uh, 1 million, then we will return data for the entire table. If it's, as in our, our case, just 100 rows, SQL Server doesn't know this. And that's the reason why it just simply assumes uh, it will be 30% uh, of rows. In this case, it's 16% because we have a uh, um, between operator, like uh, uh, two operators here. In any case, too much rows, and then basically you will get index scan. So the possible solution is, is option recompile. And this works perfect. Option recompile is one of the powerful uh, hints in SQL Server. But there is a problem with option recompile is that it does two things. One is that option recompile move this decision about the execution plan from this point to this point. So when you use option recompile, SQL Server will not create plan here, but it, it will create here. And at that point, SQL Server knows the number of rows here and can replace this literals. This is a good thing. A bad thing is that this thing will be uh, repeated whenever you call this query. When you have option recompile, this query will be recompiled. And this my, in my case, this is not a big deal because I have a single table. But of course, in production, in uh, real life case, you will have A, join B, join C, join D, um, row number, group by, subquery, something. It's a very complex query. And when you recompile this query every time and you call it, so this might be very expensive. So sometimes you cannot use simple rec option recompile, although this brings excellent plan. Uh, what is the alternative to option recompile. So one of possible is was uh, uh, for sick. I will have uh, different examples with, with the scenes later. So 
what is the alternative if we cannot use option recompile? Let's say you have a complex query exactly that I described. You call this store proc 100 times per second, then option recompile is not, it's not uh, option for you. What to do then? So, so I cannot wait because we, are, we will be out of time. I will show you. In this case, you can wrap this thing in a store proc. And we can use uh, one, so create proc, TPO, TPS1. And then instead of local variables, I will use this as parameters. And let's take this as So this will be my star proc. So the only difference is that I put it instead of local variables, now I have a parameter, so stop procedure. And uh, this, okay. So now I have a stop procedure and I will execute the same query. Instead of calling a query, I will call star proc DPS and use my parameter or both parameters, this. And this, I have no recompile in stop proc, as you can see, so no recompile. So this thing will be reused whenever I call it. And this query will be still fast. It's executed and you can see I get the same plan. Here we have a, a phenomenon uh, parameter sniffing and you can find many sessions about the bad parameter sniffing. In this case, there was a good parameter sniffing. And this is alternative if you have a problem with local variable and you cannot use option recompile. A typical example, what you can, what I can see every day, uh, developer uh, uh, mistake that every, uh, every developer makes, or almost every developer makes, is to have, for instance, this query: give me all events from uh, future events. So you can have I have here events table, and give me all future events and what they do, which is a good thing from from a development point of view. They declare a local variable, call it now. Uh, date time, then put get date there and use now here, which is okay. So event uh, date, no, event date greater than this. And these are all future events in, I need to switch my database. So these are all future events. And also this return only uh, uh, 30 events, you can see cluster index scans. SQL Server scans the table. Also, I have an index on event date. And when you use the same query and put get date directly in literal, this will be then significantly fast. And you, you can see index seek and key lookup. So this is a typical mistake made by developers to use a local variable. So be careful when you use local variable with uh, operators with comparison operators greater than, less than, uh, between. So you will end up with scan, uh, uh, with usually with index scans, so cost index scan rather than index seek. Okay, any questions for this? Optimize for unknown would not help. This, this In this case, this is a basically dealing with parameter sniffing. Here's exactly parameter sniffing helped us to solve the problem. Optimize for unknown in one possible solution a workaround for parameter sniff sniffing, which I any, anyway do not recommend at all. Any questions for this query? I will jump to a second query. Okay, let's go to the query number two. And query number two is this one. So I have a query. Against the orders table, this table has 10 million rows. I have an index on this field, cast ID. And here is my query. So select and this query return 12 rows. So I will execute it. And the square is slow. The question is why. So again, I have an index here. I have a, a cluster index, and you can see this is sorry. So this is the execution plan for this query, cluster index scan. Why SQL Server has chosen here cluster index scan? And I have an index and this query is really selective. You can see here just 15 rows, just 15 rows.
So what has this query, which is basically not good, which prevents us of having a good plan? Yeah, we lost. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Yep. Uh, I'm just giving the questions as when they come in the chat. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Please check the Zoom chat. You can answer the questions. Okay. Good. Good. So I see it here. That was questions from from previous example. Uh, some of them I saw also in, in live screen. So okay. If we have no suggestions here, why is this low? So there are two things here that could, could be problem, problematic. One is color UDF. Maybe somebody see here, my color function get here. But this function is in, in select. And if I would repeat this query without function, I would just uh, remove function here. This query will be still slow, but it will be a bit uh, uh, faster than usually. And uh, the difference between initial query and this one, that this query goes parallel now. And it's again cluster index scan, which I did not expect. But anyway, at least I have a parallel plan because scalar function prevents execution plan. And uh, I am apologize if I, if I uh, pronounced the last name uh, incorrectly. Bok Broinsma uh, uh, had a great guess, and it was about implicit conversion. And this is true. So here, this query is slow because we have implicit conversion between these two things. And this is a tip when you look at the query, check first where clause. So what we have in select is not irrelevant. As, it, as you saw here, I had a scalar function. This scalar function prevents parallelism. But the most important thing happens in filter in where and in join. And what happens here is cast ID. And when I mouse over cast ID, and sometimes developers are lazy to mouse over to check exact user uh, data type for a column, you can see here is a var car. Also, it works with integers. It is alphanumeric. And SQL Server performs simplicity conversion and converts text to int. And when you convert text to int, that means you will convert the entire uh, column. That means everything to integer. And that means you will have a here uh, cast function or convert function, which prevents SQL Server uh, to use uh, index on, or index seek at least. And that leads to uh, also wrong estimation so that SQL Server think I will faster in this scan, it will make more sense. And what we can do here, I mean, in this particular case, I can change data type here because I have declared this as a parameter. But in case that we have this as a part of store proc where I cannot change data type of my parameter, I can change, I can use uh, in, uh, explicit conversion. So I will take responsibility from SQL Server. Just don't let SQL Server to do implicit. I will go with explicit conversion and I will convert this because this conversion is cheap because I will convert a single value. So cast this means I will convert the value that, that I declare here. And cast this column means I will convert all values, all custodies in the entire table. And now this will be executed immediately. Right. Right. What's wrong now? Now it's wrong that I missed the data tabs. That should be wire card. So I need to take the same data tab this thing has. And now everything will be perfect. You can see the query executed immediately with 15 rows, exactly what we have expected at the, at the beginning. So sometimes people are just lazy. They do not check data tabs between these two things. So. If you like, if you like lottery, if you want, if you need adrenaline in production system, you can let SQL Server to, to do implicit conversion because sometimes we are not victim of implicit conversion. If I would repeat the same query, so I would here go to our car because I have another column in this table called customer ID, which is really integer. And now I do the same. I have again. Uh, imp uh, implicit conversion because this now, this customer ID field is, as you can see, this is an integer. And my argument is cast ID, this is text. 
And then we have again uh, uh, implicit conversion, but this time we don't have a problem with that because SQL Server will convert again. It will always convert a data type to data type. It doesn't matter if it's an argument or column, so it will convert text to integer and conversion will be in this direction, which is okay because it will convert this thing. As soon as we convert literal, it's fine. Or variable, if we convert a uh, column name, then we convert that will be terrible. Okay, that was a small one. So just the first tip, look always first in the where clause, check this thing, because this is, if something is slow, check where clause, what we have in, in here in, in, in select uh, clause is not uh, fully relevant, but basically it's more relevant what we have in where. Okay, any questions for first two examples? I will show you the, the coolest one. This is the cool example. And uh, I don't see questions here for previous. Okay, let's go with number three. Number three goes to the same table. And I will show you here index. Uh, uh, all indexes in this table help index orders. I have many indexes there. so. There is no single query here that I show you today that is slow because of missing indexes. So status, I have index on status. So ix3 is index on the status column. And in this, my table, all rows have status one. So there are no status, there are no rows with status zero. There are no status with zero uh, with, with, with status three. So this query returns nothing, zero rows. Let's execute and see what SQL Server think this query will return. So it'll take sometimes six seconds and cluster index can. Also, I have a index on status and this query returns nothing. That means it's high selective, this query SQL Server create the scan and look at these numbers here. Estimated number of rows is 10 million. This is the entire table and actual number of rows is zero. So SQL Server thinks it will return everything. And in reality, it returns nothing. It cannot be more wrong than this. And this is also, this is SQL Server. Everything is SQL Server 2019. Sorry, I did not tell this, but it's also in 2022 with all this you know, intelligent query processing. So this is a very simple query. It doesn't work. You can see it's cluster index scan. And um, yeah, how to tune it? This is a question on how to you know, get rid of this scan and tell SQL Server to use index. One of the possible solutions is go uh, to tell them to use index and for SIG. So, I mean, when you know that there is an index, it index ix3 and then you can use here index sick because you know to put in what is another option whenever you have in or or so what we have here we have a in and in is actually short uh, uh, short description of or statement and when we go here to the plan you can see here that SQL Server actually uh, rewrote this to use equal zero or equal three. And now tip, whenever you have a query, which is slow and you see or statement, you can try to rewrite or statement with union to replace or, and instead of or to use union or union all. This won't always work, and it's not always the case that your query is uh, slow because of OR statement, but SQL Server doesn't optimize well uh, OR statement generally. And this is a problem with OR statement actually. And without going to details, without going to details. Okay, the, the, question, uh, the suggestion was two separate queries. Yes, I can uh, show two separate queries, but I need to have union because this, if this is a part of stop procedure or query for application, I need to uh, deliver exactly the same results. But yes, it is union. So basically we will go, in this case, I can use union all because uh, one uh, row cannot be 
at the same time in, in multiple statuses, at least not, this is not quantum. And I can use union all and repeat this. And now these two queries are logical equivalent. So in, in, by using union all, I get a good plan. This plan is not ideal. So I need to repeat, actually I do this seek uh, twice, but compared to the initial, well, the initial, initial one, this is a great plan. So this is really a tip that you can try. It's not a big deal. You need to repeat your query. Sometimes it could be when you, tricky when you have in, I know, several values, you need to repeat it several times. It's a bit hard for maintenance later, but it's worth of trying basically without digging in details why something is slow here, why SQL Server thinks that, that we cannot, uh, that this thing will return million rows or 10 million rows. Uh, you can just rewrite the query and you are lucky now that the general database engine better uh, handles this um, um, union or union all operators than or statement. It is simple. Like that. It doesn't always work, but you can try it. Okay, what next is also a good tip that you can always try when you see something that doesn't work and especially with such huge discrepancy. When you see the SQL cell thinks everything will be returned you return nothing or opposite when you see a huge cardinality estimation discrepancy. What is the next, what we can try to do this? I mean, I will give you 15 seconds to, to, to think about this. So you can rewrite to union all, but what if a query doesn't work properly now? What can I try? And also it doesn't cost me too much. Five seconds more. Okay, I don't see here. Uh, so what, what you can try, this thing is related, this bug, particular bug, why SQL Server uh, expects 10 million rows and returns only, uh, only um, returns no rows is due to cardinality estimation. So in SQL Server 2014, Microsoft has changed cardinality estimation assumptions. And these new assumptions are generally better for queries, uh, for recent queries, generally better, generally better for uh, many queries from many workloads, for many customers, but these new customers are not, okay, I will, I will discuss this. I got one question with, related to select star. In this case, select star is not a problem. I will answer this immediately after I explain this. So in SQL Server 2014, Microsoft changes assumptions and it might happen that you have, uh, that you have uh, one thing that performs better with old cardinality than compared to the new one. So there are rules which are related to all cardinality. I know uh, some assumptions and assumptions are let's say generally always wrong. They can fit to your workload, but it can happen that all cardinality estimator is better for you for your particular query. In this case, the old cardinality estimator will be better with this. And you can try to do this and you can use option, use hint. And then there are two hints you can use in this case. The first hint is uh, force all cardinality estimator. This is a force legacy cardinality estimation or estimator. I'm not sure. Let's try with estimate, estimator. So estimation. And you can see that this query is executed immediately and it uses index. This is the plan what I have expected immediately on the first because we return no rows, SQL Server knows and the statistics, I have an index. Okay, let's see. Show statistics, um, orders. So that's, this is a bug. There is no excuse for this because when you look at this, SQL Server knows. So there is a, in histogram, I have one in all rows, 10 million rows have status one. SQL Server knows from this index, there are no status zero, there is no status three. And why you then expect that that will be 10 million rows? This is 
not correct. And if all Earth estimator, uh, cardinality estimator, make it better, and you can always try this. This will not work, of course. When you see that something is slow and you suspect that it might be related to cardinality estimation, try this. If you're lucky, you can, uh, you can, your query will be fast. In this case, the only thing I need to do is this. And this is even better than the previous one because I need to rewrite the query. I will not touch the business logic. I need to test. I don't need to maintain this. This is just a hint here because this query will work better with all cardinality. There is another hint, basically, you can use. Here is just a cardinality estimator. You can use a hint to go back uh, completely to uh, query optimizer. Optimizer, uh, compatibility level, ability level, uh, 110 level. So, and this will work too. This is, there is a small difference between this here. I just want to have the cardinality estimation, the old component, and the second one is more brutal. It just uh, uh, wants, uh, instructs SQL Server to do, to execute this query with all rules which are which were in SQL Server 2012. So here is just the cardinality estimation. So you can try three things when you see or statement, just you can rewrite it to use union, or you can try with these two hints to see if your query generally without, regardless of or statement, if your slow query maybe works better with or cardinality estimation. This is in complex queries, this might be, might be a case. Okay, any questions? I don't see questions in the, in, in a live session. So I will go then to next query, Oops, sorry. So this is a tricky one. The one was cool. This is a tricky. So just look at this. This is a more. So I have a here this huge database where I have uh, two tables which are huge, 100 million rows, 330 million rows. When I execute this query, this query is slow and slow and slow and slow and will take about 10 minutes. I will stop it and do we have any tip? What should I do here? So you see here, uh, when you think about this, I will just answer another question. Does Microsoft recognize this as a bug too? Yes, I think, but they do nothing to, they, they did. So this bug is so rare. I mean, so we have no, you know, we don't have too much queries. Uh, dealing is with such brutal discrepancy in estimations. And this is more or less a corner case. All efforts Microsoft do in new versions is to try to repair something, to do feedback, to, you know, to correct after the execution. They don't put the effort anymore to change cardinality estimation to make it better and so on. So basically you need to, to uh, you still need to tune queries and you will have corner case to, 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 to find this. A customer ID need index columns. Yes, we have, we have columns. So help index, all indexes, we have all indexes necessary here. Orders, I have index and customer ID. Yeah, if we would, would not have customer in index, but here is a customer ID, index IX1 is on customer ID. I have index here, I have index here, I have index here, so I have all indexes. Why do we use loop join? This is a question, the good question from Reshma, why we use, why we put hints? We put hints when something doesn't work. So I put hint in order to make my query faster. Did I make it faster? No. So therefore, is this a tricky thing? So if I did not make a fast, just remove hints. You have to remove all hints if they don't work. And in this case, it was clear that my hint doesn't work. So the only thing I just remove hint and will work immediately. And the thing with this is when you pro when you use a hint when you have inner join in table A join B, SQL Server can swap these tables uh, internally to get what is better for uh, which table to touch first in order to get a read of most, most uh, rows. When you use a hint, loop hint, 
SQL Server cannot do this anymore. You define order of touching columns. And what I did here by mistake or by intention for this, uh, for this session, I use a loop hint and that says SQL Server, go to this table, to all rows that qualify from this query and this first in this table. And then for each row from this table, uh, make a uh, uh, key lookup or try to find rows in orders table. And this table has 330 million rows. That means I will have a, about billion logical reads in this case. So it's just wrong. But if you use loop, basically, so now SQL Server will just swap the order with go first to order the orders table and, and will make it better. My tip for such things is to always to use a smaller table at the beginning. I mean, table which is more filter because here it's not about the table size, it's about the table size with filter because I have just here data for custom, for this particular customer, just orders for this customer. And I used to put this at the beginning. So even if somebody would make here a mistake or put a hint by mistake or by intention, this would work in that case. It's not necessary, but it would work because you know you put the table first table, which is. Uh, is there a good use case where loop hint can be used? Yes. Be careful. In one of the next examples, will be this case. Okay. Any questions? Uh, I don't see questions. Let's go to query number five. Okay, so I will show you here again, CP uh, help index. Actually, I have it here. I will just copy everything. So not to write. And here is new query. Okay. So I just used here temporary table into in order not to write this to the uh, to, to paint this because this query will, will return about million rows. And if I would paint million rows, that will take forever and you won't be able anymore to distinguish between costs of painting results and and um, execution query. So this that's the reason why you have it into here. And uh, so I just go to give me all or million orders and I have a status here and status is one, as you saw in the previous example. And I just have a here status lookup table and status lookup give me descriptions for status. So, and just status lookup is nothing more than, so I need to switch sorry, to, to write database. So status lookup is just this one open to closed three canceled. And I want to use here instead of one, just to see open. And when I execute this, it will take some time, about I don't know, several seconds. And you see here, the status lookup is touched uh, almost a million times. And here is the execution plan of this query. So how to make this query faster? Here are indexes on orders table. You can see that I have many indexes on order date, on customer ID, on status, on cast ID, everything is here. And on status lookup, I have no indexes, but status lookup is just this table. Do we need index on table with three rows? Okay, there is a, we already have one suggestion. I would apply this suggestion, but I will just wait for another one maybe. So the problem with this table, and this is one of the common mistakes people make when you create a small table. This table is not, you know, you need just, you need 15 seconds to create this table. Ah, ID, description, I will take, I will take here um, Tanint, I will take here Varkart 20, and that's all. And people don't think about things like uh, primary key, unique constraint, or something like that. Here, indexes are not important for a very small table, but primary key or business logic constraints are always important. What happens in this case is when you look at the execution plan for this for for uh, my main query here. So you can see here things like assert where SQL Server needs to check 
whether we have, do we have here one row or multiple rows for this status ID? If we would have multiple rows in the status lookup table, this query will return um, uh, error, exception, because you need, this is a subquery, it needs to return a single row. So I don't have uh, multiple rows here, but I can have it. I mean, there's nothing can stop me here to make, you know, insert into status lookup ID on description and have values one, X, X, X. We won't have this, but this is possible. And if I would execute this, you can see this, this query is ex executed successfully because there is no primary key. And now if I would execute this query, SQL well, server will return this exception. Of course, subquery return more than one value and we are in trouble. And so that SQL server needs to return correct result and therefore it needs to check. If, if you put the primary key or unique constraint in a table, this could this won't be possible. So I will just remove here from status where description equal x x x. So oops. Sorry. And now I will just create uh, here alter table. I will add primary key. Add primary key on ID. That's all. It doesn't matter if the table is small or not. This is a primary key. Now I cannot create this. Sometimes you hear for developers, no, but we have a drop down. It's not possible in our system to. Yeah, but SQL Server thinks it's theoretically possible. If something is theoretically possible, you can damage execution plan. SQL Server needs to check, and this needs to check will be expensive. Now, when I do the same thing, it's significantly better and it's faster. And you can see here. Uh, different plan and there's no this checking anymore because SQL Server doesn't need to 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 uh, to count number of uh, rows for this particular um, uh, for each uh, status ID because it's not possible to have a to have duplicates there and this is a uh, important thing and the suggestion uh, uh, given by somebody uh, how to tune this query was to rewrite the query to use join. Sometimes you can read and hear from people that subquery is uh, that join is uh, is uh, faster than subquery. This is not true. There is no true answer to this. Yeah, use join instead of subquery, or use subquery instead of join. You can find cases where subquery or cross uh, cross apply is significantly faster than join solution or opposite. So you need to test both. In this particular case, if I would go here and have an issue. So I prefer to use this because it's more intuitive for me. If I would have double uh, entry for status lookup, I will get here exception. In case of join, I would get double uh, uh, entries there. But I mean, you can always try to do this. The good thing with, with performance is when you see temporal tables versus table variable, what is better? Uh, sometimes you need to do this, sometimes you need to do it. It's, it's not a big deal to try both. So use just, test your query, your particular query in your particular workload. It could be a corner case. It could be so rare case, just try both. The same is for, for subquery and, and join. If you think it's better, try. It can happen that SQL, in most of the, most cases, SQL Server come up with the same plan, but sometimes depending on query complexity in one or uh, uh, data distribution, you can try both. Okay. Good. So the next one. So I need to, I need to show you one which is uh, more important. And this one is where I need to use hints. Somebody asked, can we have a use cases for hints? And this is exactly the use case for hint. Here I will show you estimated execution plan. Otherwise, this would uh, take forever. And here is uh, my uh, uh, initial database: hundred million rows, three hundred thirty million rows. This query returns just a, a few hundred rows, but you can see here that SQL Server come up with hash match join with scan. So this scan is very painful because this table has 335 million rows. So this is a terrible execution plan. And when we know that query returns few rows, when we expect that query that the SQL Server will use uh, which, which join here, 
here is a hash match join. We have expected nested loops join. When you write A join B, this is a logical operation. SQL cell needs to implement this by using one of the join operators. This is a nested loops join, merge join, and hash join. Merge join needs data to be sorted. This is not always the case. And in most of the, most of the cases, SQL server choose between. Hi, Milos. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, hello. Hello, Milos. Sorry to interrupt you. Hello. 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 Milos, can you hear me? Milos, can you hear me? Hello, Milos. Your your you got disconnected. Hello. Your audio got disconnected. Oh. Okay. Can you confirm me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Now I can hear you. Yes. Now. Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. Sorry for this. I don't know something with this wireless things now. Now it should work. So in 10 seconds, you will hear my voice. I will repeat what it, what it told here. So the thing here is I know my workload and I have expected just few rows. And uh, yeah, still doesn't work, but you can hear me, right? Okay, it will. Yeah, be, it I will can be hear there. you now. Yeah. In, in few okay. seconds, they will be able to hear us. Okay, okay, they have delay. Okay, okay, thanks. So the thing is here. So I know my workload. I want to have nested loop. I force SQL Cell to use nested loop. I did it well. I'm happy. Uh, I, I can sing now because everything is fine. But whenever you tune query, especially when you have some huge uh, discrepancy in estimation, check the very very fir first. Uh, um, operator on the on the left side this is select and do mouse over here in mouse over i can see here that this query took 1.7 gigabyte this is a my notebook if i would have a better work, uh, working station with i don't know uh, 100 gig it will take even 10 gigabytes here 1.7 gigabytes will be reserved for this query and this could be a huge issue when you have this query executed uh, in parallel. If you have this execute, if you execute parallel this query, you will get a uh, resource sum of weights because query, every query, every execution will need 1.7 gig. Why is this? So whenever you tune query with a loop hint, just see, uh, uh, remember that you do not affect estimations. You affect the only one decision. Instead of hash match, I told SQL say use nested loop and it will use nested loop, but it will still think, okay, I need to deliver 30 million rows and it will expect six gigabytes here. You did not affect this decision. So this will work if you just execute this few times as I do now, you can see it's not a big deal, but if I would start this thing and execute with uh, in parallel, say with 100, parallel threads and do the same thing. So it will, it will, so I would need more, but in this case, I don't think that I can simulate this. You will see, you will see a, a resource, resource sum of four weights. The thing is that this memory is uh, uh, wasted for execution. So that more, therefore, when you have a loop and you, when you still see huge dis dis discrepancy, you can use additional hints because I know this query returned just a few rows. I mean, 415 rows, sorry. 
415 roads out of 300 millions of euros. And you can just limit also memory for this query by using this hint, grant percent equal 0.1. And now I will have again the good plan, but now I will not waste memory. Memory. So instead of 1.7, I will have just six megabytes of memory. And this is okay. I can run this query, I don't know, 100 times per second without any problem. And I will not affect um, another thing. And I mean, if you just want to be perfectionist, basically to see, again, we did not touch the uh, estimation. SQL Server still think I will have 30 million rows to return. But I mean, therefore, one of the consequences is a parallel plan and you don't need parallel plan here. And you can go with the third hint and come up with max top one and uh, to make, uh, to make, uh, oh, oh. so max top one and to, to create workaround for this. So this is the plan what, which, which I have expected here at the beginning. So let me check time. I have only 10 minutes. so. What's the problem with this? Yeah, the question was, will not spill t, uh, to 10 dB with max current percent? Great, uh, great question, thank you. So the thing is that when you, do, when you generally use hints, you take responsibility from SQL Server. You have to be sure that you want to do this. So if I put the loop, SQL Server will forever here uh, use nested loops join. It could be that for some parameters, it would be better hash join, but no, I told him to use loop, it will use loop. So the same thing is for memory grants. So if I have, uh, thank you. If I have memory grants 0.1, that means 0.1% of server memory will be given for this query. You cannot use absolute value. And then again, it's my responsibility. If I use too low value, it could happen that we will have a, a 10 dB spill. So this approach works then when your SQL server significantly and constantly overestimates for any reason, I will show you now reason, uh, a query that you know, I will have few queries, 400 rows. I don't need more than few megabytes ever for this query. And you know your workload, like, you know, order details, order and order details. You cannot have order that has uh, 10 million items. So basically you can, you, you need, need to know your, uh, your workload, but yes, it could happen if you just, you know, you limit memory and SQL Server will not get, uh, you will not give this query more than 0.1%. This is not the general advice. Yeah, whenever you see memory grant, go with that. So when you know that query, that query, that your query doesn't need this, you can go with this. There is a feature memory grant feedback in, in SQL Server 2019 that can deal with this, but sometimes this feature also doesn't work if you don't have time to cover this right now. I just want to show you why is this query slow from the beginning. So the reason why is this query slow is that we have large tables and we have large tables. Statistics for large tables are in many cases wrong. They're not out of date, they are completely wrong. And in this case, SQL Server, when you go to just, I will take a single table, go order, you can see that already here we have a huge discrepancy. So this query returns 136 rows. So this customer has 136 orders, but SQL Server will think uh, uh, thinks it will have 21, almost 21,000. And this 21,000, this is a huge overestimation. And this overestimation combined with this overestimation make uh, make 40 million rows. So therefore, so the solution for this is whenever you have a large tables, you need to make uh, statistics to up the statistics with uh, um, not with default sample, but with a uh, larger sample rate. So update statistics, uh, orders, IX1 with uh, sample 50%, for instance. So I will now update the statistics with a sample. It will take some time because this is 100 million rows. Of course, you need to be careful. You can use full scan. Full scan will take even more and will use resources, but then you will get significantly better statistics. And this statistics then will fix this query without touching the code. So basically, and I will profit from, from uh, changing in statistics also, uh, not only for this query, but for other queries too. So it will take some time. But now when we are done, we, we can see significantly better estimation and SQL Server will make this query 
uh, fast without touching it. So whenever we do some loops, that means in most of the cases, SQL cell didn't uh, make a job properly. Let's go now. So look at this. Now it's 136 is 37. Of course, it's wrong again, but this is significantly better than previous. There was so huge overestimation. And now if I will do the same thing with others, I will go with uh, order details with, I don't know, 10%. To see because it's even will take some time. And then when this thing is done, I will execute this initial query again. So without hints, no loop join, no uh, um, memory grant, nothing, no max stop. I will get exactly the same plan that I just uh, got with all these three workarounds. So come on, please do this, finish this. Because we have only five minutes, please write your questions uh, uh, in the chat. So if you have questions until this thing is done, we have time for another, for a very last uh, example. Fortunately, we don't have time for everything. So the uh, statistic is done. I will go to my initial query and look at this thing. This query will may break my session because this is the plan that I wanted to see initially. Now I see it, but after I have executed this update starts, and when I go again to update starts with default sample rate, this is now again default sample rate, it will be faster, it will be with less, less uh, uh, resources used by server, it's done. Now I will go again and look at this, Ta -da! it's again hash join, so we need to tune it and so on. So basically the thing is here with update starts. Okay, so let's go. We have five minutes more. I will just uh, uh, tune the last one. This thing is here. Date diff, day order date, delivery date. I have index on both here. And how to tune this query. So SQL Server, as you guess, it's slow. It, this query returns only 10 rows. I have indexes on everything here but it seems that I don't have the real one that can help in this case. Okay, so SQL Server scan the table, why? So how can we deal with this? What's the problem with this query? So similar to local variable, because I have just four minutes, I need to provide a solution for this. So here, when SQL Server has a, a arithmetical or any operation between two columns, it doesn't know how many rows will be returned. And if SQL Server doesn't know how many rows will be returned. Yeah, exactly. So the, there was a suggestion calculated index column. So, so what we need to do here is to create a, a calculated column. So this particular thing in SQL Server thinks it will be 30, 3 million rows to return. 30%, exactly the same but what we had with local variable. So 30% will be returned in 30% SQL Server will use scan, everything is done, but query returns only 10 rows. So let's make um, uh, it a column, alter table orders, uh, so computed column. And I will take the exact here, this expression in a comp column. This is not persistent. This is just a definition. This is immediately done. And when I execute the same query again, the very same query. So it's not, it's still slow because SQL Server will use, uh, uh, will use um, um, scan. But what is a bit better is that now we have, uh, we have less, uh, we have better estimation because this thing could help SQL Server to have better estimation, but it's still, it won't use index and we can make it really fast when you create index. So this thing is now just the metadata, but when I create index on computed column, so on orders and comp C. So now this is a physical implementation. We have an index, so index will take place there. It's a physical, physical object. And then when I, execute the same query, SQL Server needs to recognize this. Ah, this is, uh, you have an index and it creates immediately result for this. And you can see that the index on computed column is automatically recognized. This feature works perfectly in enterprise edition. In case of standard edition, you need to, you need to rewrite your query and instead of uh, uh, to use here uh, uh, column name, to use here comp call. So this is what you need to do in, uh, in, 
in standard edition, but in enterprise edition, SQL Server is smart and, and recognize this. And this smartest you need to pay because it's enterprise edition. Okay, I have just one minute left. Please write your questions. And this is the very last thing is that you will you will get all these examples. I will send this to organizers. And they will give you I don't know some link to 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 download. And in addition to examples, also I will send you uh, for each particular query. You will see uh, also results and several solutions for that. So which I of course did not. So here you have a solution for that. Any questions? Will the index on the computed column make persistent as well? No, uh, index will index is persistent, but computed column won't be persistent. So we just need from a, a, a computed column, we don't need to be persistent. We just need this definition. This definition will help SQL Server to make better, uh, better estimation, but index is the thing that will make this faster because you index is physical logic, but the index doesn't make column persistent. Any other questions? Any best practice on how often to revisit hinted queries to check the hints are still adequate? This is a good question. So that, you know, there is no best practice. You, you should avoid hints. The best practice is to avoid hints, then you don't need to do this. But this is a great question because we forget sometimes we, we, we have a problem, we put the hint, we solve the problem and we forget about this. And, you know, over time, data distribution change, uh, number of users change, table uh, size change, everything change. We get new cumulative update. Microsoft change uh, uh, database engine. We upgrade to new version, and all these changes can affect this decision. And you should, you know, generally you should uh, uh, check this for critical things. I don't know uh, once in three months, I would say, but generally. I try to avoid this as much as possible. So I would rather hear up the statistic than to use hints. I would use hints just uh, as a workarounds if I have uh, pressure on uh, business pressure, if something happens on weekend or something, but then I will search for a regular solution without hints. But yeah, that's a good question. Is there any hint for high logical reads on query? No, there is no hints that you cannot, with hints, you cannot affect estimation. There is no, uh, uh, way to tell SQL Server you need to, this table has million rows. It would be nice to have some kind of estimation, then optimize for estimation this, but this doesn't exist. Mm -hmm.